So, you're about to venture into the Mistlands for the first time, and you're wondering how your black metal or plain steer weapons will fare against the various enemies. Well, let's talk about it. I'll be testing multiple weapons in this video, so if you'd like, you can use the time warps that I've put in the description to skip to your favorite weapon of choice. The weapons I'll be covering in this video are the Black Metal Sword, the Black Metal Axe, the Black Metal At Gear, the Black Metal Knife, the Porcupine, and a bonus, the Frostner, which isn't technically a Plains tier, it's Mountain tier, but we'll see how it fares. Also, if you haven't yet been to the Mistlands, this is your spoiler warning for Mistlands enemies and terrain. I'm going to be donning some fully upgraded padded armor for this video, so you can see how Seekers might hit my character with the same armor you're probably still wearing. Seekers hit pretty hard no matter what you're wearing, so parrying and blocking are important, so bring your shield, ideally the black metal one, fully upgraded, but also potions are a must, and of course just try not to get hit in the first place. Also, do note that my skill levels for certain weapon categories are likely high compared to many people that might be venturing into the Mistlands for the first time. I may hit a bit harder than you would, but the concepts are still the same. You may just have to take an extra swipe or two. Alright, so let's get into it. The main enemy you'll be fighting in the Mistlands are the Seekers. They're basically these big ol' hyper-aggressive flying bugs. But you'll also get Seeker Soldiers, which can't fly, but have different attack types and a whole lot more health. There's also the Gyal, or Sky Jellyfish, as I like to call them, but we're going to avoid fighting them for this video. You can pretty easily run away from them. Seekers and Seeker Soldiers both have a 0.5 resistance to blunt, pierce, and slash damage, and are immune to spirit damage because they're not undead creatures. They're not particularly weak to anything. That makes pretty much all weapons not particularly great against them. We're pretty equally handicapped here. Thanks, devs. But what I think that also means is that whatever weapon class you've been trained up with and are familiar with throughout most of your playthrough will work okay for the Mistlands. You don't need to take time to train up another skill or use valuable resources to make a new weapon. What you've been working with will continue to work perfectly fine, or at least well enough. Now that the basic logistics are taken care of, get your food, equip your wisp light, and let's head into the Mistlands to test some weapons. We'll start with the Black Metal Sword. The Black Metal Sword was my chosen weapon for tackling the Mistlands initially, as I used swords through most of my playthrough. I can still use a shield, and swords have a nice wide sweep, which is great for hitting multiple enemies at a time, which is something that may come in handy for fighting multiple enemies in the Mistlands. Plus, its secondary attack hits pretty hard. Fully upgraded, the Black Metal Sword at level 4 does 113 slash damage, which is pretty fantastic. This sword handles Seekers nicely, though remember, my sword skill is in the mid-40s, but if swords have been your primary throughout your playthrough, your skill level might be not too far off from mine. If you watched my Mistwalker video, you know how I feel about swords. They're awesome, and balanced, and good in the hands of pretty much anyone. They don't really create much challenge, and that can be a good thing for the Mistlands. It'll help you navigate safely and reduce your overall chances of dying, especially with the Black Metal Shield, which parries Seekers nicely. Seekers soldiers are never much trouble. All it is is a just a battle with time, battle with stamina, but when you have a sky jellyfish attacking you, it's not great, so I just ran away. Not a big issue. This clip right here is a good example of level terrain, how effective the black metal sword can be in the hands of somebody who at least isn't completely terrible at the game. It only takes a few slashes to kill seekers and I can just use the shield to parry. And at least with good food in my experience, you may not even need the black metal shield to parry a seeker. But if a one star seeker like this comes along, definitely pull out the shield. I guess I could have made this a little better by using uh, planes to your food, but you can see how quickly this seeker dies. It's, it's not really a big deal. I think you'll be just fine if you're using the shield with the black metal sword. Now let's test the black metal axe. If you're of the frugal variety and decided early in the game to abstain from other weapons in favor of the multi-purpose axes as your primary weapon, you're, you're straight up not gonna have a good time. This is my opinion, so if you disagree and axes have been working for you, that's fantastic. Please continue to love your axes and you have my permission to dislike this video. But I just don't like using the one-handed axes as a primary weapon. As a weapon, I find them to be extremely slow. They're just, they swing so slowly. Yes, you can still use a shield with them, which is nice. They're a one-handed weapon, but for a one-handed weapon, their swing is so incredibly slow. I, I just cannot stand it. And yeah, it's nice that you can use it perfectly fine. You really don't need a shield to parry a seeker, 
Uh, it's probably a better idea to do so. But when it came to this one star seeker, when I had the ax, I just felt completely underpowered, unprepared, and yeah, I lost my rested bonus. I was just not gonna have a good time. This was by far the most hectic encounter of this entire video. It's mostly because I'm just not great or well trained with the one-handed axes as a primary weapon. I didn't feel like it hit hard enough, so I had to pop a bone mass and I used the terrain to my advantage as much as I could. I was not having a good time. If it was just one single one star seeker and I had my shield and I had level terrain, I probably would have been okay because it's not too difficult to parry them with the shield and you know you can stun lock them kind of but this other seeker came along and it just it made it a lot more complicated and with the slow swing of the axe it's just really rough for me that plus the lack of stamina because I lost my rested bonus. But in reality, these are the kind of situations you're gonna come across when you do enter the Mistlands. This is the kind of chaos you'll probably encounter on the regular. So this is pretty real. I'm gonna skip around just a little bit because this was a long battle that I, had. I just had to walk around a little bit, regain some stamina. I had to, you know, just whatever, the seeker. It's just, it can't move. It kind of got stuck in this little spot, so I took the chance. I regained some stamina, and I felt a little more confident in taking on this seeker, although it got an instant hit on me but I was able to pretty much just take it out without too much effort since it was the only enemy now. But I will say one thing about axes, I do like their secondary attack. It is really cool and it's effective. Can black metal axes handle seekers? Sure, but I'd strongly suggest a faster weapon. Now let's break out the at gear. At gears are pretty cool. They're basically two-handed long spears, and they're very effective at keeping enemies at a distance, which is helpful for the Mistlands. They're very good at quickly handling single enemies or pushing back groups with the secondary twirl attack. At gears are two-handed weapons, which obviously makes it so you can't use a shield with it, but at least for regular Seekers and Soldiers, you should be perfectly fine blocking and parrying without using one. The only big difficulty with At gears, aside from maybe blocking a one-star Seeker, is they do take quite a bit of stamina. So you're gonna have to manage your stamina by maybe walking around and doing a little twirl around Seekers and just kiting them in a circle a little bit more often, which I obviously didn't show there. But it's, you know, it's a little bit of a battle with stamina with At gears, but it's still going to be very effective and you'll be perfectly fine if At gears have been your primary since the dawn of the At gear. I think it was the bronze was the first one. I love that right there. It was a perfect example of the secondary twirl attack launching two seekers completely off this cliff uh, one didn't come back but that right there that was an easy one to kill and I skipped the beginning of this battle right here just to showcase that it's like a baseball bat sometimes if you get it right and it will really just launch seekers if you've got multiple enemies attacking you like I do right now the secondary attack on the at gear is such a nice effective attack I do wish it did a little more damage, but it seems good enough. At least in my experience, the secondary attack doesn't seem to be something that is designed to do a massive amount of damage. It's just designed to push a whole lot of enemies away, get a little distance, just like that. And yeah, it's, you know, you, you get a little distance with this weapon and then you can give them a good poke. That's the whole point of At Gears, I think. And they do a really good job at handling Seekers in the Mistlands. If they've been your primary, you'll be just fine. Now let's switch to the black metal knife. Knives are interesting in Valheim. They're very fast, but don't really seem to hit too hard. And at least in my experience, they kind of suck at blocking. So in my testing, a shield was a required accessory, which kind of negates the whole knife thing in the first place, right? Knives are designed to be stealth weapons. You sneak up on your enemies and you stab them in the back. I have no doubt in my mind that if knives and stealth have been your primary play method through the game, you'll do much better better than I did at trying out knives in the Mistlands, but I, I just didn't have a good time. I found the black metal knife to be, yeah, fast, but it was just kind of weird, and uh, I don't know. I Right here, I did do the whole reach around thing, which is nice because you walk fast with the black metal knife, but also when you have a shield equipped, you're going to be a little slower than you would without, 
And not long after I killed the previous extra seeker while attacking this seeker soldier, another one decides to fly up. Um, yeah, I avoided that with, you know, the reach around. And when I do hit the butt of the seeker soldier, it does a great job. It's fast and I'm able to get at least two hits in there. And the damage looks pretty good. Yeah, it's yellow. No matter what you hit the butt with, it's always going to be yellow damage. This was a long fight, so I'm pretty much just going to fast forward to the end. I, you know, it's not too bad. I'm just not familiar with knives. I did try some of the other knives, but I'm just, I'm really not that familiar. And it's just, it's not something that really is my play style. But again, if this is your play style, I think you'll be just fine because you've grown your knife skill throughout your entire playthrough. Your stealth is probably better than mine. But uh, yeah, let's talk about stealth. I try to stealthily sneak up on the Seeker. It doesn't work. I even de-equipped the Wisp Light so it wouldn't maybe see me a little bit easier. It wasn't, it wasn't going well. And yeah, I couldn't actually parry a regular Seeker, it seemed, with just a regular uh, knife. I don't know. It doesn't seem like that's its primary purpose at all. So yeah, definitely, if knives are your thing, bring the shield. You can still use your knife just like I do here, but uh, it kind of just, I don't know, it feels weird using a shield with a little small knife. But hey, look, we have a one-star seeker, and it seems like they always pop out of the mist the moment I'm using a weapon that I'm just not very well trained up with. It just seems like I'm getting punished for, you know, trying to kill all these seekers in the mistlands. And of course, I have no stamina. I get staggered, even though I'm using the black metal shield. And yeah, so we just kind of circle each other for a while. I, you know, this is a good example of you know, you can just, if you only have one enemy, you can kind of just kite it into a circle. And ideally with the good terrain right here, this is mostly level terrain, you can just kite it in a circle and it will just, it won't be able to hit you. You can regain your stamina and kill it just like that. Time to switch to the porcupine. The Porcupine is the current top tier one-handed club in the game, and it's made from death mosquito needles and iron. It's a very effective weapon in the Mistlands, and I did make a video exclusively on how it handles Seekers in the Mistlands, but I will be going back and revisiting that video so I can make a sequel because I've become more familiar with it since then, and it truly deserves a second look. But yeah, I'm using the black metal shield with it right now because this is a one star. It's kind of necessary, but it's just, it's hitting hard even though my club's level is only in the 20s, that one star really just, it wasn't that big of a deal. Then we have a whole bunch of Seekers fluttering around me. We got three of them and yeah, I just, I know it's difficult to handle multiple enemies at once. This is a good example of why a shield is helpful. Technically, I don't need to use a shield to block a Seeker, but having multiple enemies attack you all at once, having more block armor is just incredibly helpful. Not that it's helping me incredibly well. I'm still struggling because I'm just, you know, kind of bad at the game every once in a while. Something I've also noticed is that even though I do take potions into the Mistlands, I just forget to use them. I, I don't know why. I'm at nine health right now and I just, <laughs> it goes my way, but but it's just, I always forget to use potions. I don't know, I think this clip right here is funny because I sneak up on this seeker, I just stun it and then kill it almost instantly. Kind of funny. Sometimes stealth is easy, sometimes it's just unintentional. Now with this seeker encounter right here, this one was alone, I thought it was at least, but then we have another one in the mist. Uh, but I do have a dwarven friend who wants to help out and I find it difficult right here, I, I almost hit him. I definitely do not want to hit him because the moment you do hit him, he will become hostile to you, obviously. But yeah, he was really helpful. Thank you very much. I appreciate your support. You gotta thank friendly NPCs, right? Time for the Frostner. If you played through Valheim using clubs and built Frostner to tackle the planes, you probably won't be disappointed venturing into the Mistlands. I know, I know, Frostner is technically not Plains tier. It's unlocked in the mountains, and the Porcupine is the Plains club upgrade. But Frostner is unequivocally a cool weapon, and many people, I imagine, are going to want to keep using it. While, like all weapons, Seekers are resistant to blunt damage, the Frostner has Frost damage, which will have a slowing effect on Seekers, making them easier to kill. As you can see, I'm kind of playing with this Seeker, because I don't have any other enemies going around me, and it's just kind of fun to see how long the frost damage and the frost effect actually lasts on Seekers. The Frostner has no issue whatsoever parrying Seekers, and if you really want to play around with them, I like to play with the secondary attack, the whole wind up in the pitch, you know, it's pretty cool, it knocks enemies back, and I think it's a really good thing to separate enemies, and the Frostner, you know, the slowing effect makes it so that they don't 
attack you immediately. It's really handy. I got lucky and found a one-star seeker over here, and just for fun, I put away the black metal shield to try the Frostner. I knew what was gonna happen, but I don't know why I tried it. I wanted to see if the Frostner itself would block a one-star seeker. I'm an idiot, but you saw how effective it was at knocking even a one-star seeker back. It's slowed. It can't really do anything except for very slowly crawl up to me, and yeah, I just, I kinda just destroy it without much effort. So, what weapon should you bring with you to the Mistlands? Frankly, the answer is whatever you've been playing with already. As we've established, Seekers are generally resistant to all damage types from edged weapons. So, whatever class of weapons you've been using primarily through your playthrough, they will work just fine against Seekers in the Mistlands. You may struggle a bit if you've been using knives through most of your playthrough, but that's at least my experience. You can stick to stealth, and I'm sure you'll be just fine. It's just never been something that I've been very good at. And as far as one-handed axes are concerned, Stop it. Get some help. of course you know I'm joking, but if you enjoy axes, go for it. Live your dreams. If I had to pick just one weapon class to tackle the Mistlands, I'd probably pick, firstly, something that you can use a shield with. Ag gears are awesome, and if you're super familiar with them, that's great. Proceed as planned. But shields are extremely helpful for tackling multiple enemies, and I'd say it's kind of almost a necessity in the Mistlands. So if I had to choose just one weapon type, I'd maybe say clubs. Clubs are nice because you have the option for the Frostner, which does frost damage and slows enemies, even though it's technically not a planes tier weapon, it's effective. Slowing down enemies is so effective and helpful in tight situations. But you also have the Porcupine, which does two types of damage, blunt and piercing, even though Seekers kind of resist both of those, but that could be said for all damage types. It's still effective and you'll be just fine. But hey, Anything you've been using is perfectly fine. I chose swords because I love swords and I like how effective they are against a wide variety of enemies, and they're perfectly fine against seekers. But use whatever you have the highest skill level in or whatever you're most comfortable with. That's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for over 250 subscribers. If you have an idea for a video, please let me know. If you feel like it, do the whole like, comment, and subscribe thing. All right, thanks for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day.